Hi everyone, uh, hopefully you can hear me loud and clear, hopefully not too loud. Uh, let's just bring that down just a little bit. Um, if, if you can hear me, those of you who are in the chat room, just let me know, give me a shout out on the uh, in the chat room just to say it's coming through clear, that would be great. Um, hopefully we are clear because I'm just going to tell you that if you're not watching this at 8pm UK time in, uh, and you're not watching it live, jump forward. Hold on a second, let's just get this going. I've got to get this going here. Whoop. Let's put that on. I've got to do that and we've got to do uh, that countdown. Okay, so if you're not watching this live, make sure that you jump forward four minutes and 54 seconds to get past this uh, this countdown. Uh, but Brian, thanks for that. I can see now that uh, the sound's coming through. Tom Ward can't see me. You shouldn't be able to see me just yet, Tom. <laughs> You've got to give me time to get dressed. Um, right, well, listen, thanks so much for... Uh, Boom, 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 boom. Make sure the sounds. Yeah, we've got the picture coming through. Cool. Uh, thanks so much for everybody who's already in the chat room. Numbers are great already, which is really cool. We've got five minutes to go, or four and a half actually. Uh, before we start, if you could just go through the usual thing of just letting other folks know that you're going to be watching this, uh, post it out on your social media and all that kind of stuff. That would be great. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to go through some stuff with the brushes. Uh, quite a few things I want to go through. There's been some really good updates uh, in Photoshop CC 2018. Um, mainly to do with organizing, but I want to actually show you how to make a certain kind of brush as well. Uh, and I've got a really cool video to show at the end. So um, uh, Mick Mac in nice and clear. That's cool. Uh, yeah. So what shall we talk about while we're waiting? <laughs> oh, Dev Steve Healy, you've got to stop mentioning Devon, mate. You've got to stop that. All right. <laughs> you've got to stop it. We'll be there soon enough, mate. The house goes on the market here um we're looking at the end of february for the house going on the market here so hopefully we'll sell it fairly quickly but yeah we're looking to move down there certainly uh by the middle at the latest of 2018 so and we're going to be moving to um kind of south molten -y kind of area those of you who know it got woolacan beach nearby linmouth linton graham harding heavy breathing though i thought i was on the wrong side am i breathing heavy but i moved this mic away just a little bit there we go ian munro Monroe is in the house. <laughs> Good to see you, mate. Thanks very much for coming along. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Right, I've got loads we're going to go through. Uh, but I'm going to kind of dive in and out. You'll, see, you'll probably hear the mic coming in and out as I'm just kind of doing stuff, just making sure that everything's uh, running well. Ian, will I be coming up to Skin soon? Yes, I will. The next few weeks, I'm really, really busy. Uh, but I've spoken uh, to the main man, Mr. Crothers, um, and we're kind of looking to come up maybe in the next sort of six weeks i think it was something like that anthony's got the details uh brian we need to speak see if you're going to come and join us again mate because we had a, such a hoot last time got a really good few shoots planned to do with yusuf Karsh. we're doing a yusuf Karsh themed 1930s 1940s style of stuff so but uh, ian brian i'll speak to you about that um uh after this i guess right i'll just turn my mic off just for a second while i just do some stuff. <laughs> Dan Rhodes, you are a legend. Thank you very much. This There's this thing you can do called Super Chat, donations type thing, and there's been a couple of people over the last few weeks who have been throwing, a, you know, throwing some kind of like little kind of donations in there, and it's just unbelievable. I'm not asking anybody else to do it, but I just think it is incredible that people do that. So Dan Rhodes, you're a star. Thank you very much, mate. Really appreciate it. Okay, so it'll be the usual scenario. Then when we get to uh, 30 seconds, you'll start to hear some music start to come in. That'll get louder as we get nearer to the final part of the countdown. Uh, and then we'll crack on. I've got some things to show you with regarding brushes.
Patrick Lamontagne is in the house. Okay, so with 12 seconds to go, now I'm nervous. Hi folks, Glyn here, just to remind you that if you haven't already, make sure you click on the subscribe button on my YouTube channel and also click the bell icon and tick in the notifications checkbox so that you'll never miss any of the live broadcasts. That's just a great and free way of showing you like the channel. Also, over on my website at glyndewis.com, click on the newsletter menu item to join my email group and download your free ebook called How to Develop Your Style. Fill in your email address, first name and family name and then click on the subscribe button. And finally, add me in and connect over on Instagram by finding me with the username at Glindewis. All right, so hopefully you can hear me. This is me, by the way. This isn't a Clark Kent thing where you can't recognise me with the glasses on. This is Glyn. I'm now at the age when I need these things to look at the screen. Uh, before I start anything, somebody called Scoobdo. Let's go to the chat room. Somebody called Scoobdo, I think their handle was, just donated $10. This is insane. I was just mentioning in the chat room before I started that people have started putting these donations through as I'm doing these live chats. Never, ever expected it. I didn't even know that kind of facility was there. But guys, I seriously appreciate that. So Scoobdo, whoever you are and wherever you are, absolute legend thank you so much um but guys thanks so much for joining me on halloween night you've probably been out and got all your trick or treating done you've got a, probably a box full of sweets in front of you now but we're gonna go through some stuff tonight we're gonna cover uh, brushes i've got loads of stuff i want to go through but it shouldn't take too long because some of it i'm guessing you're going to kind of know from all the updates that have come through since uh, adobe max there's been loads of things that have been input into photoshop, photoshop cc 2018 you've no doubt seen lots of videos but some of it has been really kind of hidden and been very kind of sneakily put in there so it's almost like easter eggs that you can find them at some point but i'm going to take you through some of the things to do with brushes we're going to probably make a brush as well uh, but please stick around to the very end and I'm not just saying that to be crafty but please stick around to the very end because this whole thing is about brushes and at the end of it I want to show you a video um, I want to show you a video that with my friend Aaron Blaze those of you who know Aaron uh, incredible artist he did a video it's a speed retouching video of a painting that he did for me and my wife and I want to play that at the end because it is incredible and it just goes to show what you can do with brushes I am no uh, what I would call traditional artist, you know, what, however you interpret art, I'm a photographer, researcher, but you know, people like Aaron and people like Patrick Lamontagne, who's uh, joined us in the chat room as well, he's kind of watching tonight. Those guys are what I would say are artists. They seriously know what to do with brushes. So don't judge me by tonight. This is purely to show you the updates and give you an idea also how you can do something uh, with some brushes and maybe point out a few things on the screen on Photoshop that you maybe didn't really know what was for, and maybe you haven't even clicked it to see what it does. Uh, but let's crack on. Let's just start. Oh, by the way, we had one like and one dislike before I even started. That's just insane. But some of you folks put a like uh, before we started as well. So uh, you kind of, you did the sort of the balance was gone and kind of the, the likers, the trolls were kicked into dust. Um, right, but let's just dive over to my screen. Oh, Brian, by the way, the phone is here by my side. Just in case anything goes wrong, you know what to do. All right, it's on. I can see it. So just let me know. All right, so let's just dive over to my uh, desktop so you can see the desktop there. Um, all right, so brushes. Let's just take it nice and simple, nice and basic, and kind of build up to kind of reveal some of the things that have happened in Photoshop CC 2018. So uh, getting a brush, nothing new here. You press B on the keyboard or come over to the left-hand side of the key, um, left-hand side of the screen where you've got the brushes. You do now also have the option for these kind of assistance pop-ups that can go and give you an idea of what those particular tools do, which I think is great for people who are new to uh, new to Photoshop. But we get the brushes, and then just as you would expect with any tool within Photoshop, you always have uh, the options bar at the top of the screen changes to give you functionality dependent on what tool it is you are using. Now, I'm going to cover some of the things that are actually in the options bar as we go through this, because you may not know what some of them do. And there is a new one. Let's see if I can zoom in now, because I've learned how to zoom in now. I hope this will work. There's a new one. Tell me if that works. Please tell me if that works. You should now be zoomed in called smoothing. I'll talk a little bit about that and let you know something that you need to do with that 
if you're going to use a different kind of tool all right sounds weird but you'll know what i mean but okay so let's have a look at the brushes then when we come over when we're in the brushes we come to the top left hand corner of the screen and this is ordinarily where you're going to find all your brushes or probably where you would dive in to get all your brushes and you can see here it can start to look pretty damn cluttered i mean this is an example of the kind of brushes that i've got in here um, and I'm not, you know, I haven't got a lot. I've got a fair few, but I've not got a lot. Not the kind of amount of brushes that people like Aaron and Patrick would have. But even at this amount of brushes, it can be hard to number one, know exactly what the brush is, and also to find what I want. So um, things that you can do. Obviously, we've got this little uh, pop out here where the brushes are. You can drag that to resize it. Okay, so that's nothing new there. We've also now got this scroller at the bottom where we can change the size of the brushes. So we were able to do that before as well. And that's really handy. But what I like to do as well here is we've got this little cog icon. Let's just zoom in so you can see that there. This little cog, just kind of thing this here. If we click on this, we get a little drop down menu. And we've got these little uh, icon or little uh, options on this part here. Let me just zoom in on that as well. So you can see here brush name, brush stroke, and brush tip. And you can see at the moment, we've got it set to brush tip. And that was generally how I pretty much used it all the time. But now if I click on brush name, you can see now that it gives us the, not just the brush tip, but the brush name next to it. However, if you're like me, when you make brushes or you probably buy some brushes, that doesn't really help you because eventually you start to buy brushes like I've got here. And you probably see that if I zoom in, you can see that they're all numbered. Some of them are all numbered the same and they're just called sampled brush and then a number and that doesn't really help you when you're trying to find them so a great thing i actually love this here the brush stroke so now you can see what that brush will be like when you use it and if you increase the size of the scroller at the bottom make it nice and big you get a great idea visually of what that brush will be now that's great for me when i look at brushes like these ones here these are the ones that i got off aaron we'll talk about that in a moment these are all hair brushes so i can really see nice and simple not just a brush tip but I can actually see what the stroke's going to be like. And that is incredibly handy, all right? So I'm, as we go through, I'm ticking these things off here. Got that, got that, got that. Uh, also, you're gonna probably see at the top of the screen or top of this little menu here. Again, I'll just zoom in on that. You can see these little uh, seven little icons here. These are, the, these are the seven previous brushes that you currently use. This is incredibly handy if you're kind of using different brushes and you want to dive back to uh, a brush that you've just used maybe two or three times ago. You can just click on it and it'll bring it back straight in for you. So that's, again, is a really, really handy thing to have. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the, the how you can rotate the brush, the size, the hardness, that kind of stuff. I'm probably wrong to do this, but I'm gonna guess you kind of know that, all right? You kind of know that. So that's that. Now, another thing which I think is incredible with this, makes it a lot easier. We used to have all kinds of different panels that we would open up for brushes which for me always got a little bit confusing trying to find groups of brushes. And I wanna show you now how you can make it much easier to organize all your brushes so that then you'll be able to find them much, much quicker. Let me just take down uh, the descriptions here. So I'll go uh, take off the brush name. I'm also gonna take off the brush stroke. So we go back to this kind of default view uh, that I always used to have before. All right, so we've got this, uh, got this thing here now. Again, go into that little cog icon in the top right hand corner. What you can do is you can create a new brush group. Uh, and when I click on that, you'll see here we get this little pop up that says uh, name and you could call this, let's say, uh, I've got loads of smoke kind of brushes on the screen on this uh, left hand side here. So if I call this smoke and click OK, you can see now that we get this little um, we get a folder here now called smoke. And what I can actually do is drag brushes into that to drop them down so it can start to build up a folder so it's nice and easy to find the smoke brushes. However, when we do that, it puts the actual folder at the very top of my brush tips, but my smoke ones are way down here. So trying to drag them into it can be quite difficult. So one way you can do it is this. In fact, I'll show you how I do it. I'll just delete this, uh, let's just delete, close that down and I'm gonna delete that group. Okay, so click okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the right hand side of the screen because there are always a number of different ways that you can actually find and do things with brushes. So the same kind of uh, functionality is found in different kind of places. I'm going to come over to the right hand side of the screen now where I've got my uh, quick access to things like the brushes, character panels, swatches and so on. And I'm going to click on the brushes. And at the bottom, if I just uh, zoom in on that one, there's a lot of zooming on going on. See at the bottom here, 
Here we've got one that's called uh, where we can actually create a brush preset. I'm going to cover that in a moment, or new brush. Here we've got the groups, and I find it much easier for me to do it down here. So what we can do is this. Let me just scroll to find, let's find some of those hair brushes that I got from Aaron. So here's some of them here. So we've got, I'll put, I'll click on this one just here. So you can see I've clicked on that one called 175. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'll click on some more. And you can probably see now that they're all highlighted. They've got this little blue frame around them. Uh, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to that create new group icon, which is that one just here, this little create new group. And when I click on that, I'll call this one hair, whoops, uh, hair, and then click OK. So now what's happened is, I hope you can see this, as I zoom in, we've got the group, let's just make, bring it, whoop, let's just go back, let's go bring it, zoom into about here. We've got the group, but now when I open it, the brushes have actually put, been put straight into that folder. And what I can also do is I can actually click on brushes, drag, uh, drag and drop them into there as well. So I find that a really brilliant way of organizing all my brushes. So that's like all the hair ones, I could click on more of them and then shift click to get the rest of them in and then just click, drag them, drop them on top of that folder and they're all nicely organized and very easy for me to find now in that particular folder. I can do with the same with the smoke. Let's click on one of the smoke icons just there shift and click so you can see that loads of them are now blue just see them all there and then we'll click on create a new group call that smoke press enter and now you can see we've got them nicely organized all in the folders there and i can always drag them in and and add more to it but when you've got a lot of brushes just highlight them all create click new or create new group name it press ok and they're all in there nicely organized very very easy for you to find so that's one of the huge things that have been brought in i think it's pretty much like when camera raw got introduced into it everyone was like mm, okay but i think this is going to make a huge difference it will to me and i'm guessing i'm probably speaking for it uh speaking on patrick's behalf here but i'm guessing he will love that because that guy has probably got thousands of brushes so incredibly easy to look for uh, incredibly easy to find them i'm going to tick that one off we're going to have a quick trailer while i grab a quick uh, glass of water then I'm going to show you something else. So let me just dive over to uh, here. And I'll be back in a moment. All right, so the relevance of that trailer there is, um, I'll probably let you know more about this at some point, but I've kind of teamed up with B&H uh, Photo in New York. So I'm really excited about what's going to come from that. I had a meeting with them when I was in Adobe Max. Uh, we've had a phone call with them last night. So there's quite a few things happening. Uh, and it looks like we were going to New York to do some seminars for them at B&H. I've never been there. Uh, so quite looking forward to that. But I'm really looking forward to how, how that relationship goes. But I've had a glass of water. Let's crack on. Let me show you something else. Right. So something else then, let's have a look at uh, brushes. I want to talk to you about how you can actually uh, make brushes, uh, but also I want to show you a, a kind of brush that I made earlier on and how simple it is to do this. First of all, so we're going to talk about brush settings, brush presets, because there's an, an also been an update in brush presets and how you save a brush. But let me just show you this first of all. Let me just go and get a normal round brush. You can see here we've got those one of those seven. I'm going to choose the one that's over on the left hand side, a normal round brush. And I'm going to use my left square bracket key to make it nice and small, like so. And all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to do, whoops, let's, let's take the smoothing off. We'll talk about smoothing in a little while. And we'll just go back. So I'm going to go in really bad pretend signature, all right? Something like that. Anybody copies that, <laughs> it ain't going to get away with anything. That is not my signature. Okay, so when we make it, let's talk, talk about basics now. When we're making brushes in Photoshop, basically when you have uh, anything black, that's what Photoshop will turn into the brush. But if you have elements of gray, uh, different shades of gray, when you make the brush, they will become kind of varying levels of, of um, transparent parts of the brush as well. But this is a signature kind of uh, pure black. And if I wanted to make a brush out of this, I would just go to the edit menu and I would choose define brush preset. Just this one here, define brush preset and I'll call it Glyn signature and then click OK. So now I've got a brush that I can use as my signature 
Let's just delete that layer there, put this new blank layer up on top. You can see now I can use this to create uh, maybe a signature on my pictures that I upload before I put them on the web and all that kind of stuff. So that's really simple. But let me just show you this now. I'm going to go to File and Open. And in my uh, desktop, I've got this one here. I've got a file which I saved. Uh, 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 let's have a look. Where's it gone? Oh, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? File. Uh, let's just minimize this. I've got some grass, believe it or not, that I photographed earlier on. Sounds kind of weird, but it'll make sense when uh, when I show it you in a minute. So tutorials. Let's see if he can find it. Hold on, hold on. It's not there. Uh, 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 where did I put that? Where did I put that? How disgraceful. Can't even find where I put that brush now. I'll tell you what I'll do. Let's just go. I've got it in my OneDrive. So I'll go File, Open, and we'll go to OneDrive. And I believe it's in Pictures, uh, Instagram, Miscellaneous Pictures. Oh, I can't find it. I can't find it's gone. Anyway, listen, what I had was I took a picture of some grass outside okay took a picture of some grass outside and it kind of looked like this let's just get a normal brush uh all i did was i got some uh blades of grass from outside in the garden a white piece of paper and dropped them onto the paper then took a picture of it with my phone okay so you've got green grass white piece of paper then all you need to do obviously we talked about how you can make brushes it turns whatever is black into a brush so just imagine now because i can't for some reason can't find it best laid plans it looked something like this all right imagine that is grass that i've thrown onto a piece of paper all right so when you photograph the grass you would turn it to you desaturate it and then just make it really contrasty so that the paper was pure white and the grass was really black and then again you would go to edit define brush preset and we'll call it grass so now we've got very bad looking grass okay really really bad looking grass but then once we've got that, let's just get a blank layer now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the brush settings. So we can choose that from either up here in this, on, the, um, on the options bar, this little icon just here, brush settings. So I'm going to click on that now. And when we get this, we've got loads of options available to us. And I really encourage you to play around with this because it is amazing what you can do with these particular settings here. Now, when we first come into it, you can play around with the size. You've got sliders for the size. We're in the brush tip shape area at the moment. And you can also change the spacing like so. And you can change the angle of it and all this kind of stuff. But you can also come into it says shape dynamics. Now, for those of you who don't know, it says size jitter. Basically, what that means is when you're using the brush, every time you lift off and press down again, it will vary the size of that brush. So if you're making things like uh, grass or snow or debris, you're going to want to use that quite high up so that there's no uniformity and it always looks different. But I'm going to create, make you keep the size jitter fairly low. We've also got angle jitter. I'm going to play around with this one just a little bit. Uh, we've got scattering, so we can really scatter them up. So I would highly, if you haven't done this, just get in there and play with these kind of settings, see what you can create. But another one that I'm going to do, I'm going to click on color dynamics. All right. Now, before we go into there, let's just change the color of my foreground and background colors over in the toolbar the foreground color let's go for a kind of like a greenish kind of color something like that and i'll click on the background color and we'll create one that's just a little bit darker than that maybe something like so now when i'm in the color dynamics i can actually vary every time i use the brush how it swaps between the foreground and background color which is really cool we've also got brightness jitter saturation jitter and let's have a look what that's given us at the moment can you see how that's giving me this kind of like grass effect just like this all right really i mean bearing in mind that was just some squiggles of uh, squiggles with my uh freehand squiggles there you can actually create some amazing effects just doing stuff like this all right again i'm no artist now here's the here's what the update is in photoshop which i think is going to be absolutely brilliant when we go to save this now i'm going to go to the fly out menu in the top right hand corner just up here this little preset here's this little icon click on that and i'm going to choose new brush preset and when this comes up let me just show you what we've got in here now because this never used to be in it it now says can you see where it says include color that never used to be in there this is definitely i hate to say the phrase this is a game changer absolute game changer so now what you can see is it says it captures the brush size so whatever size i've set this brush to it will capture that 
It's also going to remember all those settings that I put in the brush settings to, so it keeps the look of the actual grass. It's also going to keep the color. I'm going to click OK on that. So now then, all right, so we should be able to find that brush when we've actually created that. Let's just drag this back to over here now out of the way. Let's just put that there. Let's dock it out of the way. And now when we look at our brushes over here, can you see at the bottom, if I zoom in on that one, where it says 139, hopefully you'll see the kind of squiggly shape of the brush. You can see the icon that it's a brush. It's got a number. God knows what that means. But you can see there's a little swatch there as well, telling us it's also captured the color. Okay, that's the color. So now let me show you why that is really, really useful. So let's just say then you're doing loads of work within Photoshop. You may have actually been like I have when I do the dodging and burning, how I use the dodge and burn tools. You may be somebody who do, do, does dodging and burning using the black and white foreground color does exactly the same thing. But if you wanted to change the dodging and burning by reducing it a little bit, painting with a gray brush, rather than you constantly have to keep changing that black to mid gray, you can just save a brush with that color and just constantly click back and forward to it. So let me just show you what I mean here. I'm gonna choose a brush. Let's go for a normal round brush now. So I've got rid of the grass brush and I'm gonna set my foreground and background colors to their default of black and white. So you can see now I've just got this brush here. But look, when I now go to my brushes, loads of the brushes in here, scroll down, find the one that I just made, that grass one I just made and click on it. Now, when you look at it, can you see over in the actual toolbar over here, the colors have gone back to those two shades of gray. And now look, there we go. We've got the brush back to how it was. So we were using this one with one click. We go back to the brushes with those colors, the settings, everything. That I think is incredibly handy. It's a long time coming, but I think there's a lot of people who are going to be giving it, yes, thank God for that. So I absolutely love that. Um, right, let's have a quick uh, break. I want to talk to you a little bit of news, and then I'm going to show you something else, because there's there's loads of stuff in here. And while that little thing's on, I'm going to just scrub out some of the things that I've actually got written on here. So let's just see where we're going. Let's just put up uh, this one here. All right, so this is just to tell you, I've finished, pretty much finished doing that cover shoot tutorial. This is kind of like the new big tutorial I've been working on. I hate to sound like I'm advertising this, but I am really excited about this, really chuffed how it's going. Uh, this is a, a full length tutorial, because you remember a while back now, a few weeks or so ago, I was saying I wasn't doing workshops. I'm still sticking by that. I won't be doing workshops for the foreseeable future. Uh, times are changing, you know what I mean? I was always very conscious that when you did a workshop, there's always somebody who didn't quite get it or didn't feel like they got the what they wanted from it. Maybe if it was too low a level or maybe it was too over their heads. So I think nowadays the way forward, well, certainly for me anyway, is by doing um, online or downloadable workshops. So this package, this cover shoot package would literally be like you're with me and we're doing that whole photo shoot, doing that kind of Vanity Fair, uh, Annie Leibovitz kind of shoot, all the way from how to get the idea all the photo shoot, all the retouching, all right? That's all I wanna say about it. I hate doing advertising, but you know what I mean. Right, so let's go back to my desktop. Uh, Vernon Nash, I think the number is the size of the brush in pixels when it was created. Vernon, I'll check into that, could well be, uh, could well be. Incidentally, on, the, on that note, size of brushes, uh, latest versions of Photoshop going back maybe one or two updates or so, the biggest brush you can have in Photoshop is 5,000 pixels. So when you're making your brushes, it might be worth creating a document, blank document, 5,000, get a nice big brush. So then when you're using it nice and small, it'll still look great. Make it nice and big, it'll still look really cool. So 5,000 is your, 5,000 pixels is your uh, biggest setting that you can have. Right, so we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. Right, let's have a look at the options bar. Quick thing on the options bar. I'm gonna choose a normal round brush now. Let's go back, choose one of my previous brushes there. And I'll press D to go back to the default and so on and so forth. And this is just to kind of show you a couple of things in the options bar that you may not know about. All right, so we've talked about where the brushes are. We've talked about where the brush settings are. Uh, you've then got the different blend modes. Not really here to talk about that, but opacity. Uh, that obviously controls the strength of the brush. You've also got flow. Now to give you an idea of what that means, let's take the opacity. When you're, when you're actually using brushes, if you then use your numerical keypad, you can your, you can change the strength of the opacity. So if I press one, let's have a look here, we go brush. If I press, uh, let's go for one, it changes, let's just zoom in and show you that as well. I have to keep doing this because this screen's big. So one takes you to 
220, 330, 40s, and so on. If you do them very quick, you can see you can get a combination of numbers like so. Now, let's just put that back to zero, takes it to 100. You've then got flow. Now, if you want to change flow nice and quickly, keyboard shortcut, you use your numerical keypad, but introduce the shift key. So I'm holding down the shift key and pressing one for 10, two for 20, three for 30, four for 40, and so on. We've also got smoothing. We'll talk about smoothing in a minute, but I want to kind of cover that in a mo because it's actually really, really cool. So opacity, if I take that down to let's say 50, if I use a brush, you can see that opacity, there we go. And if I hold the brush down uh, or my tablet and I go back over it, you can see that it doesn't increase. To increase the opacity or the actual um, strength of that brush, it'll have to release, press down again, and it builds up and builds up and builds up. Compare that now to flow. So here we've got flow. If I take that down to 50 and I press down and do a stroke from left to right, the more times I, I'm not even letting go now, but as I go over it, it kind of just builds up and builds up and builds up. So opacity, you have to lift off, press down to build up on it. Flow naturally builds up as you go left to right or wherever. It's kind of like using a spray can, I guess. The more you hold it down, you go back over an area, it builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up. So that's that one. Now you've also got some icons at the top just here. You've got this icon here and you've got this icon over here. Now these generally are for those of you who um, who have like a Wacom tablet, pressure sensitive tablet. Now I've got one of those over here um, and they actually, you can use them so that you can set it so it's pressure sensitive so that you the harder you press down, you can increase the size of the brush or you can increase the opacity of the actual brush you're using and so on and so forth. But the kind of work I do is I actually turn that off. I never apply it, I never put it into the settings uh, because I just find that I don't tend to use it that often. And also if I have to have the settings on, the, the uh, pressure sensitivity, it wears the nib down of the actual pen really, really quickly. If you're like someone like me who turns it off generally, but you every now and again you want it on, rather than diving into the settings, you can actually just press these icons down here. So there's one here where it says opacity. If you click that one down, that kind of temporarily turns on pressure sensitivity so that the harder you press, the denser the brush. The lighter you press, the less uh, dense. So sort of the opacity is less. So that's that one. The one over on the right hand side here is for the size. So again, if you turned off pressure sensitivity, you press that one to turn it on temporarily. The harder you press down on your tablet, the bigger your brush will be and so on and so on. So that's those two there. Now you've also got uh, a little kind of, um, almost like a spray can, it's called an airbrush. This one's setting here. Let me just get rid of these strokes on here and create a new blank document. Uh, oh, somebody says, got a good question. What is the question? What's the question? Robert Walker, Walker. Is there a downloadable keyboard overlay for all the shortcuts? Um, I don't know about downloadable, but you can go to the actual uh, preferences and settings within Photoshop and you can actually see what all the keyboard shortcuts are, Robert. And if you don't like them, you can generally change them to what you want to be. But there will be somewhere online. I guarantee you go to Google and you type in Photoshop keyboard uh, list you will find one there, there will always be you know those kind of things out there so you'll definitely definitely find one now there's a little icon just here just to kind of finish off on the actual options bar up here this little airbrush icon this is really cool again maybe it's going to be used more by people who are what i would call traditional artists but it's very very cool effect so if we go to um press down the uh, airbrush what you'll find is as you if i take let's just do uh press down in fact let's just make it nice and soft i'm gonna make the brush really soft normal round brush nice and soft let's take the size down just a little bit and let's see if we can get this to work on here there we go cool all right so when we use the uh, the airbrush i'm just going to click on the screen or click on my desktop and just press down and watch what happens as i press down and keep pressed down it builds up and builds up and builds up and just keeps on getting bigger it's almost like bacteria growing on the screen so that's an airbrush all right very cool effects you can i guess you can do with that again there you go, there's Mickey Mouse. Uh, very, very, very cool effects you can do with that one, I guess, if you wanted to do that kind of stuff. All right, so that's that. Now, the last thing, hopefully I can kind of show you on here. Let's just scrub these off. Everyone keeping up with me, we're doing all right. Uh, which model of Wacom tablet do you use again? Uh, Bodel Rosaria, I use a Wacom Intuos Pro, and I always use the small. Let me just show you here. Oop. This one here, I always use the small, whether I'm traveling or whether I'm actually at home. 
Reason being is because, you know, if you're in front of the screen for quite a long time, what I don't want to do is be doing this kind of thing with my arm to reach either sides of the screen. With a little one, I can literally just do this and I can cover the whole of the screen so I can get nice and comfortable with my nice chair, nice glass of uh, rosé, arm resting on the table there and just move my wrist rather than my arm and I find that works really, really well for me. I know a lot of people use, you know, the medium, some people have the big, some people have the Cintiqs. I tried a Cintiq once, but it didn't really work for me because I was a um, great bit of kit, don't get me wrong, but because I'm I'm left-handed and I was trying to use Lightroom, I found that when I went across to those the left or the right-hand side of the screen, I went like this, trying to do some settings, my arm was covering the picture. So I was trying to do this when I was trying to do it, so it didn't work, got rid of it, and I've resorted now going back to this thing here. It tends to work much, much better for me. All right, so let's have a look. Uh, can we get this smoothing thing to work in here? Uh, why isn't that smooth? There we go. I don't know why that smoothing's turned off there. Let's have a look. That's interesting why that's not showing up there. In fact, what I'll tell you what I'll do, I'm gonna close that down. Let's just see if we can get the smoothing to work. I've no idea why that wasn't there. Funny enough, on the, on the MacBook Pro that I've got, which is you know a fairly oldish MacBook Pro now, the smoothing won't work and I actually had a feeling it was because something to do with the graphics card maybe not coping with it I don't know maybe that could be something to look into but let me just open up a, another document here go to my brushes there you go the smoothing's working now how bizarre okay so smoothing what is that you'll have seen the demo videos you'll have seen them doing those from Adobe uh, at the moment if I just zoom in you can see the smoothing is at zero so if I try to draw let's say uh, an S like this can you see how it's really kind of it's not the best it's kind of very squiggly. It's almost like I've had a glass of wine already when really I'm only drinking water. But if I now take the smoothing, I'll take it up to 100. Now look what happens when I go like this. Really smooth. You can see, I mean, that is just wow. Do you know what I mean? So I guess if you were doing some tracing and all that kind of stuff, that would be absolutely brilliant. Now you'll probably notice when you're using the smoothing, when you pull it, I'm hoping you can see this. In fact, let me just zoom in so maybe you see it a bit clearer. When I pull, can you see there's like a little pink kind of line coming from the back of where I'm using the brush? They call that a leash. It's called a leash. And you can change how that behaves. You've got some options here, the little cog icon next to the smoothing. Uh, pulled string mode, stroke catch up. And I guess these are going to be really, really kind of arty kind of effects. I quite like this one here. Pulled string mode. Look what happens when you do this one. This is cool. Let me just zoom in to here. And this is kind of like... It goes like this, look. See how it's got like a string? So you go boom, 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 boom. It's kind of cool. Um, I guess that's going to be for the artists. Uh, so get some questions over to people like Patrick. Would you, Patrick, would you use that? I don't know. I don't know if you'd use that or not, but it's kind of cool. Um, the last thing then, let me just show you the last thing. And then I want to show you that, um, that video of Aaron's because I really, really want you to see that. It is absolutely brilliant. Oh, yes, right, okay. Edit. <laughs> edit and we're going to go to preferences so go to the edit menu preferences and then cursors now in here just a few options that you can have if you don't like to have the uh the leash when you're using the brush and doing the smoothing if you find that a little bit distracting you've got an option in here where it says show brush leash while smoothing try saying that when you've got somebody else's teeth in so if you don't want it take a tick out of there if you want to change the color of it just click on that little color swatch and then you can change the color to whatever it is. Because if you're maybe working on a, a, a picture that's got a pink thing in it, you're not gonna see the leash. So change it to an appropriate color so you can see it so it's nice and clear. And the last one here, see where it says brush preview up in the right hand side and it's red at the moment. That there is if you're doing something like uh, the keyboard shortcuts to make your brushes bigger or if you're doing the, the uh, strokes where you're making them softer. So for example, if I'm using the uh, I'm Windows machine, so if I right click and hold down, if I, whoops, if I hold down the Alt key and right click, and I drag right and left, right and left, it makes it bigger and smaller. If I go up, it goes uh, softer, down it goes harder. Now if you're using Mac, it's not, you don't have to use the mouse, just hold down your Option key and your Command key, and then do left and right, up and down. Now you see how that was red? If you wanna change it to red, a different color I mean, just go to edit, preferences, cursors, and change the color of this particular swatch here up in the right hand corner. So change it to whatever color you want. When I installed Photoshop CC 2018, 
and I tried that shortcut to increase the size and the hardness, I couldn't even see the brush. And that was because the color was white. So if you're finding that you can't do that shortcut, make sure that the brush preview color isn't white and then you'll be able to see it. So that's that there. Um, so that's quite a lot that we've covered there. Quite a few things that we've covered. How are we getting on in the chat rooms? Have a quick look, make sure there's nothing in there. I will hang around later. Uh, once the video's finished playing, I will hang around in the chat room like I always do to go through some questions. But is there anything in here that's uh, burning up that people need to know about? Patrick, I'm I don't know. I'll have to try it. I'm a horrible inker. So I might use, all oh, right, okay. So that's somebody maybe asking Patrick what he would use that um, leash thing for, okay? Something like that. I'm, you know, I'm not gonna keep you. I'm not gonna keep you because I really do appreciate your time with this. But, um, oh yeah, one more thing. There is one more thing I need to show you. God, I'm all over the place. Um, brushes. Let's just open up the brushes here. Again, other places that you can find this, but one of the options you'll see is where it says, let's just zoom in on that again. I love now I can do this zoom in. Get more brushes. Now, when you click on that, it'll open up your browser, your default browser. It'll take you to the Adobe site where you can now download a load of brushes that have been made uh, by a guy called Kyle T. Webster. He's an award-winning illustrator, designer, and you can see them all in here and you'll just click download and install them and away you go. So there's some incredible brushes in there. Very, very easy to use. But other brushes I want to let you know about are by Aaron, who I've mentioned already. I'll put a link to Aaron's website in the description part of the video, but it is creatureartteacher.com. So go to Aaron's website. Let's just bring that up just there. Uh, so, and then when you're in his website, go to where it says tutorials and lessons, and then brush and texture sets. Now in here, you're gonna find loads of brushes that Aaron has made. The hair brushes here are just insane. Absolutely love those, but he's got foliage brushes, textures, you name it. Now they're really cheap anyway, and this Aaron doesn't know I'm doing this, but uh, there's a sale on, so you can get like custom brush that here, $3.75, insane, all right? So highly recommend you go and check out some of the brushes that Aaron's got. But talking of Aaron, let's just come back to me just for a second. Let's go to there and go to there. Talking of Aaron, I'm now going to show you that little video. Um, this was an incredible video that Aaron did for us. I asked Aaron uh, a couple of years ago now, because we, those of you who've followed what I do for a while, you know that I love animals, okay? And we had, we had two cats. A couple of years ago, two, three years ago, we lost uh, my favorite. I can't say my favorite. That's wrong to say that. Uh, we lost uh, one of our cats called Morris. If I just bring this down, I'm going to show you a picture of Morris, because Morris was always with me when I was, uh, when I was doing stuff. Where's my cursor? Let's go. Let's just bring that down here and I'll show you a quick picture of Morris. Here you go. Here's Morris. So this is Morris when I'm always, uh, when I'm working, Morris was always sat with me. Uh, so I asked Aaron if he would do a painting of Morris, which is this boy cat here who's no longer with us, and his sister Posey. So I'm going to show you that video now uh, and I'll use this opportunity now to say goodbye. I'll see you in the chat room. But again, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I will go through some of the questions in there. Uh, please, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. There's loads of people who watch videos but don't subscribe. <laughs> I hope that's not you. Uh, but listen, thanks so much for spending the time with me. Time you can't get back. I'm going to pass you on to the video that Aaron did now and wish you a good night, and I'll see you next week. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.